Oh, it wasn't on? Yeah, but the, you see, it's not the case that <laughs> the fu- what's called the future passive participle refers to something to be done in the future. Maybe it's a somewhat misleading designation, future passive participle. I would prefer to call it maybe an optative participle. It's what should be done, but something that should be done can still have the status of what sh- of being something that should be done, whether in the past, present, or future. So the person, he achieves our hardship, he says, katang karaniyang, I have done what should have been done, what had to be done. The speaker isn't working. So my voice isn't coming through the speaker. But is my voice coming through to the even to the back? You don't hear me so clearly. Better put on the speech. Okay, is this is this better? Oh I see. Okay. No, I just want okay. Okay, Bhavati, Bhavitabang. Very rare, I think. Babbang takes on a special meaning of being capable. Charity gives the geron- geronda. Oh, bad spelling. Geronda. Charity gives the the gerenda charitabang, what should be practiced. Charitabang, what should be practiced. From janati we get janitabang, nyataba, nyaya, what can be known, what should be known. For example, actually what's very common is the augmented form parinyayang. The first noble truth, the truth of dukkha, parinyayang, should be fully understood, fully known. Okay, this, I won't go through each one one by one. We'll come across examples in the, in the reading passages. And here, passage, paragraph 2.2 explains, the future passive participle does not simply have the future passive sense, but also connotes desirability, that is, what should be done, what is worthy of being done. Then some examples are given. Bhikkhu Hoti Anjali Karaniyo. Here we have the gerundiv Karaniyo, which means should be done. Anjali is respectful greeting by joining the palms. So a bhikkhu is one who is worthy of respectful greetings. Then we have the famous line from the Mangala Sutta, puja cha puja ni yanang, worship of those who are worthy of worship. puja ni yang, that refers to persons who are truly venerable, worthy of veneration. Then the future passive participle may be used either as an adjective or a noun. That is, if there is another noun that the future passive participle qualifies, then it's functioning as an adjective. But if there is no such noun, then it's func- if there is no such other no other noun, then it is itself functioning as a noun. For example, in the line, puja cha pujani yanang. Here, pujani yanang means those who are worthy of worship. So it's functioning as a noun. But this implies it could be puja cha pujani yanang pugalanang. In that case, pugalanang is persons. Pujani Yanang Pugalanam, persons worthy of worship. 
Okay, then point three, this word atan, which means self. In this context, not soul. It was a mistake for them to put the word soul in there. When it's functioning reflexively, atta just means oneself or himself, herself, yourself. For example, in this line from the Kalama Sutta, yada tumhe atanava jane yata. When you know this by yourselves, here, atanava, that's the instrumental case. The va is eva. It's just emphatic. Okay, then four deals with negatives, negations. Okay, the negation ma is what we call the prohibitive particle. And this is used to form negative commands or prohibitions when you want to give a command, do not do, do this. And normally, this is a little strange, but it's used the verb that goes with it is usually an aorist. The aorist is the past tense. So it doesn't really... It's hard to understand why they would use the past tense to make a command, but it's just the way it's done. So, for example, we have some examples here. Ma sadang, <laughs> Ma sadang akatta. Do not make noise, do not make a sound. And you just yeah, I, I was just thinking about that. Someone running by. <laughs> you say to your son, Ma Sada Ma Katta. No, no, he was just trying to give us a good example to the book. Or since he's one person, I think he's one person, <laughs> you would have to say, Ma Sada Ma Kasi. So if the two of them, the two boys were playing, then you could say ma sada makatta. But even though this past tense is used, it doesn't when it's used with this ma, the past tense verb doesn't have any past significance. So don't get misled by that. Then also the ma sometimes it's used with the optative ma pamadam anuyum jeta. Anuyunjeta, second person, plural optative. It means don't indulge in, don't, don't indulge in negligence. Then sometimes it's used with the normal imperative. Ma gacha, don't go. But that seems to me, I think it's not so common. The most common form with ma is the past, the hours. Okay, then the 4.2. No here is an em- a negative emphatic. And sometimes no va has the sense or not. Eso damo kusalo. No va. This quality is wholesome. Or this doctrine is well suited or not. Then this verb eti meaning comes. I think this occurs most often in imperatives, this particular verb. You often get ehi bhikkhu when the Buddha addresses a monk, come monk. Especially this happens when somebody wants to get ordained by the by the Buddha. He's a layman and the Buddha teaches the doctrine to him, and then he develops confidence, and he asks to become a monk. Then the Buddha says to him, Ehi bhikkhu, charahi brahmacharyang samma dukkha santa kiriyaya. Come, monk, live the holy life in order to make a complete end of suffering. And then it's said in the commentary, when the Buddha says this, then though the person is a layman with long hair and fancy clothes, but suddenly all of his 
hair and beard disappear and he's clean shaven, no beard, and the clothes magically change into monk's robes and he has the alms bowl by his side so he's ready to go out on alms rounds. So they call this a special type of ordination, the Ehi Bhikkhu ordination. Then there are two words which have the meaning of if. Satche and simply say. The say is what you call it, is what is called a clitic form. That means it never comes at the beginning of a sentence, but it attaches on to another word. Like here in the example Ahanche Eva Kopana Musa Vadi Asan which means very literally, if I were to be a speaker of falsehood. And then, in contrast, sache occurs as an independent word. It occurs, usually occurs at the beginning of a sentence. For example, sache labeta nipakkang sahayam. If you should acquire a wise, a prudent friend. There's another word for the, it has a sense of if that occurs, I don't know if it occurs in suttas, but it comes in commentary, O Pali. Yadi. Then they give an example of how such a goes with the present ten, present tense verbs. Sache sachang vadasi, adasi bhavasi. But they translate this, you will not be a servant. But I would take the sense to be present. If you are speaking the truth, then you aren't a servant. In other words, just by the fact that you're speaking the truth, this is a master speaking to his servant. He's saying, then you're already released from, from servitude. Look at in paragraph 7, the locative case. This is just a little point in grammar that when you give from something, from some store, that store from which one is giving comes in the locative. The ja apasmin, if one should give, say, from the little that one has, or even the one could take this, if one should give when one has a little, then ate this root ha. This is a rather strange, unusual root. It belongs to a class of Sanskrit roots which are called duplicating. They duplicate to form the stem. But when it duplicates, it undergoes a little change so that it duplicates not by turning into the laughter, ha ha, <laughs> but it duplicates by turning out a J form, so you get the stem jaha. Then from this we get several quite important verbs, particularly in the list given here. Pajahati. And this gives, for example, the jaran, pajahitva, pahaya. And we get this in relation to the second noble truth, the noble truth of suffering. We have future participle. Here they give pajahati ba. But in the second noble truth is, I think, pahatabha. Yeah, actually on page 174 they have the Dhamma Chakra Pavatana Sutta. There you find in paragraph 2.2, Roman numeral 2, Tang Ko Panidang Dukang Samudayang Arya Satchang Pahatabang Time. So actually I would correct this. The fut- where you see future particle at the bottom, or 
Pajahati. Leave Pajahati Bhang. That could be commentarial. But the more common is Pahata Bhang. And this also gives the important noun. The noun comes from this verb Pahana, which means eradication or abandoning. So you say, like, the aim for which the Buddha teaches the Dhamma, one aim is the pahana, the abandoning of akusala dhammas, of unwholesome qualities. In fact, <laughs> just now my eye fell on, just below in the list they give pajahatiba as the, jira, as the future participle form. But just below you have less than seven further readings Tayo me brahmana agi pahataba. <laughs> so the actual common correct form is just below there. <laughs> okay, that takes us through the grammatical explanation. Any questions on the grammatical point? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's Korean. <laughs> Kaji ma. Kaji ma. Ma at the end is all don't, don't, don't. Oh, in Korean, the don't goes at the end. Don't, don't. Ma is, ma at the end is a command form of don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And kaji go, so we say kaji ma. <laughs> mm. <laughs> now, we lo- now we know Korean. Yeah. <laughs> Kajima. Kajima. Okay, let us go to the um, reading reading passages. Lesson 7. This is page 97. Okay, passage 1. This is the famous Kalama Sutta. Okay. Eta Tumhe Kalama. Here the Eta this, we just encountered this. This is the plural, second person, plural imperative of the verb eti. Here we have it on page 103. So it means come. You come, O Kalamas. Then in what follows, the actual verb is omitted. So it just says, literally, it says, ma anusavena. Anusavena means by oral oral tradition. Here, sava means to hear. I think it would be ting in Chinese. Ting. (laughs) Anu would be be sway. Sway-ting. Does that make any sense in Chinese? Sway one. I say one is would be here. <laughs> okay, so do not. So sway one would make sense. Sway one. Okay. So it's literally do not by oral tradition. But there seems to be. I mean, it's obvious the verb is for some reason omitted or understood. So do not. Go by oral tradition. Do not rely on oral tradition. Yeah, anusavena, the word anusavena comes from sava, which means hearing, and anu, which means along. So anusavena is what is passed along by hearing from teacher to pupil. This is the Brahminic tradition of learning transmitted in the Vedas. Ma paramparaya. Here, parampara comes from para plus para. Para means other, from other to other. And that means, you could say, a lineage of teachers. Everybody nowadays is so concerned, what lineage is this? What lineage are you in? <laughs> what lineage did you get that from? 
And so the word for lineage in the Indian tradition, the line of teachers going back, is called parampara. Literally, it's one after another. And so the Buddha says, do not rely on lineage because something has come down in a long lineage. Ma iti kiraya. Iti kiraya, iti Itikira means thus it is said. So this could be interpreted as hearsay. So do not ma itikiraya. Do not go by hearsay. Ma pitaka sampadanena. Pitaka would mean a collection of sacred writings. And sampadana, sampadana would be a collection of sacred writings. So do, do not go by a collection of sacred writings. Ma samano no garuti. Do not go with the thought, the samana, that is this ascetic, is our guru, our spiritual teacher. Don't think just because the ascetic, this particular ascetic, says something that you have to accept it because he is your guru. But yada tumhe kalama atanava jane yata. When you, O kalamas, should know by yourself, just by yourself, for yourself. Ime Dhamma Akusala, Ime Dhamma Savadja, Ime Dhamma Vinyu Garahita. These things or these qualities are unwholesome. These things are blamable, blameworthy. These things are criticized by the wise, by the intelligent people. Ime Dhamma Samatha Samadina Ahitaya Dukaya Sangvatanti These things, Samatha, taken up, Samadina, undertaken, they lead to harm and suffering. Okay, when you know all of this, atta tumhe kalama paja he yata, then, O kalamas, you should abandon them. And here we have that verb, paja he yata, that's from the root ha meaning to get rid of, so you should abandon them, get rid of them. Okay, then the Buddha is going to question them. Tanking manyata kalama. What do you think about this, O kalamas? Lobo purisasa ajatang upajamano upajati Hitayava ahitayava. When greed is arising within a person, does it arise <clears throat> for harm or not harm? Then they answer, Ahitaya Bhante, for not harm. I'm sorry. What did I say? For harm or not harm? Is that what I said? Yeah. Oh, no, no. For his welfare or non-welfare. For when greed arises, when, why didn't anybody correct me on that? I'm busy writing. Blindly, blindly going, thinking, <laughs> thinking, summon oh no, <laughs> guru. <laughs> the, the, the ascetic is our guru, <laughs> our teacher. We just accept. Okay. So when greed arises within a person, 
Does it arise for his welfare or no non-welfare for his harm? Ahitaya bhante. It arises for his non-welfare, for his harm. Venerable sir. Yeah. 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 No, it's more the senses when greed arises inwardly for a person. <laughs> if you wanted to say the person's greed, then I think it would have been puri sasa lobo. The puri sasa would have come first. But here it's just speaking about lobo, greed arising for a person. It's a genitive, but it arises for a person. In other words, but in English we would say within a person. But it arises inwardly for a person. Okay, so then the Buddha says, Ludo Panayang Kalama Purisa Pugalo. What is this word? Panayang? Ludo Panayang. Somebody said it? Right, it's Pana, which is just the connective. And then Ayang. So then when Pana and Ayang meet, they form Sandhi. The two A's come together to form a long A. Okay, so Ludo Panayang Kalama Purisa Pugalo. It's literally greedy this person, individual, but we would say more freely, this greedy individual. Lobena abibuto pariyadina chito. Here, abibuto means overpowered. Lobena by greed. Pariyadina chito. Here, chita. Shin is the mind is overcome or obsessed by greed. Lobena abibuto pariyadina chito. Overcome by this person, this greedy person, overcome by greed, the mind obsessed by greed. And here, pariyadina chito. Do you know what kind of compound this is? Remember, it's a particular type of compound. Exactly. <laughs> Two-car garage, four-story. It's called, in Pali, bahu bihi. Or sometimes, I think in English, they call it adjectival compound. So it's, you see that here, chita it's ending in the O. You see, chitta by itself is neuter, so it would end in A-N-A-M, ang, chitang. But here it all becomes an adjective qualifying pugalo, the person. So chitta is declined like an adjective to follow pugalo. So this greedy person, overcome by greed, with his mind, this person with the mind obsessed by greed, panampi hanati, he kills living beings, adinampi adiyati, he takes what is not given, in other words, he steals, paradarampi gachati, he goes to the wives of others, Musapi Banati, he speaks falsely, speaks falsehood. Parampi Tatataya Samadapeti. Samadapeti means to encourage. So he encourages others, other persons. Tatataya. Some translators take Tatataya here to mean suchness, like 
like a philosophical idea of suchness, but that's a, a misunderstanding. Here, the sense is simply for that he encourages others to such behavior. The way tatataya is formed, tata means, it's an adverb meaning such or thus. Then here it gets turned, gets turned into an abstract masculine or neuter noun by putting this ending on, which does mean, it means literally, it means suchness. But it's not in the philosophical sense of <laughs> the Vijnanavada school, the suchness of phenomena. But it's simply the senses for such behavior. And then it comes in Tathataya. What case is this? Data case. He encourages others towards such behavior. Then yang sa hoti digaratang ahitaya dukayati. Here the yang sa is yang, which sa is abbreviation of asa, for him is digaratang means literally long night. But this is an idiom in Pali and also a similar one in Sanskrit, meaning simply for a long time. Ahitaya for harm, dukaya for suffering. So which, so he encourages this person, this greedy person encourages, does all of these bad things and encourages others to do them too, which for him brings his bring leads to his harm and suffering for a long time. Then the Kalamas say, Evang Bhante, yes, sir. Then the next two sections just repeat the same thing, but taking dosa, hatred, to be the unwholesome quality. Then the third one takes moha to be the unwholesome quality. And here we have these three past participles used as adjectives. So the the bad unwholesome state of loba, of greed, gives makes a person one who is ludta, greedy. The unwholesome state of dosa, aversion or hatred, makes a person dutta, a hating person. You can't say hateful person, because hateful has something, a different meaning. That means something, not something which is full of hate, but hateful means something which should be hated. So we say a hating person. And the bad state of moha, delusion or ignorance, makes a person mulha, a deluded person. Okay, so we get two paragraphs which repeat the same thing, the same questionnaire for dosa and moha. Then the next one, the Buddha asked the Kalamas, Tanking manyata kalama ime dhamma kusala va akusala va ti. What do you think, Kalamas? Here though there's no verb, the verb is understood. Ime, these states, these qualities, Wholesome or unwholesome? In other words, are they wholesome or unwholesome? Greed, hatred, and delusion. The Kalamas say, Akusala Bhante, unwholesome, sir. Savajja va anavajja va, blameworthy or blameless. 
savaja bhante, they're blameworthy. Vinyu garahitava, vinyu pasatavati. Are they criticized by the wise? Here, vinyu means wise or intelligent people. Garahita is criticized or censored, blamed. And then pasata means praise. So are they criticized by the wise or praised by the wise? And the Kalamas say, Vinyu Garahita Bhante. They are blamed, criticized by the wise. Then he says, Samatha Samadina Ahitaya Dukaya Sangvatanti Nova. Samatha means taken up. Samadina really means the same thing. You could say undertaken. When they are taken up, undertaken, do they lead to harm? Ahitaya. And dukkha, to suffering. Or not, no va. Katang va eta hotiti. Literally, this last sentence means, or how is it here? The sentence seems to be, or how do you, how well, how do you take it? How do, yeah. What is your opinion about this? Katang. Katang is how. Yeah. Excuse me? No. What did you have katang as? Yeah, the thing is, you see, there is another word, kata, which it does mean story, kat, the other word, kata. Um, then if you have it accusative, it will come katang. No, no, no. Katang is, I guess, dhamma? Um, so it's an indeclinable katang. We have yata as or how, tata such, thus. Then the corresponding interrogative is katang, how. So then the kalama say samata bante samadina Ahitaya Dukaya Sangvatanti. T. Okay. Uh, taken up, undertaken, they lead to harm and suffering. Evang no Eta Hoti. That is the way it is. That is the way it is here. To to us, such it is, such, I was trying to get it literally, such to us, here it is, or more freely in normal English, that is the way we take it, that's the way we understand it. Yeah, yeah. Actually, you see, no, there's two, two words, no, with different meanings. One, in the previous set, paragraph you have the no va which is or not here no is a negative particle but here in the next in the last sentence evang no eta hoti such to us here it is in other words such is the way we take it such is the way we understand it yeah Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's a whole group of people. You could say also Kalama, it's plural. Well, <laughs> first the fact that it has Tume means it's plural. Though not necessarily, sometimes Tume is used. Well, actually, when a lower person addresses a superior, they use a plural form. Yeah, polite. But here, once you, if you see the sutta, you know it's plural because before the Buddha starts addressing these people, the group of kalamas, they come and they pay respects to the Buddha. Some 
some they all come, some pay respects, some just announce their names and clan and sit down, some sit down silently. Okay, maybe we'll stop here for today, but I want to go through the list of words at the, for the further reading and see if there are any corrections to make or alterations. Okay, this is page 106 for anatta. I prefer non-self or not-self rather than not a soul. And apaya, it has a special meaning of the lower realms of existence, the realms of misery, the sphere of misery. So technically it's includes the animal realm, the hell realms, and the realm of the pretas, or so-called hungry ghosts. Then avacharo means having as its range. I would have to see, well, that's one meaning, I'll have to see how it's used. Let's see. I see yoga vacharo. That's actually, this is a technical term. Yoga vacharo. You could, we could translate that as a meditator. It means one whose sphere is, whose domain is yoga. Yoga understood not as these physical exercises, but as spiritual effort. Meditator. Yeah. A person devoted to meditation. Then the word amisang takes on the meaning of Apart from being meaning meat or food for enjoyment, you have material things, a carnal thing. Yeah, so Amisa Garuko, one who attaches important to material things, to say to sensual enjoyment. And Amisa Chakuko, Chakuka, is one who is intent on sensual enjoyment or material gain. On page 107, middle of the page, Dugati. Yeah, those are the unfortunate realms of existence. Again, it's the same as the Apaya, the realms of misery. Then here the word, you see the word right below that, Doso. In Pali, there are two words, Dosa, which... It's easy to confuse them in Pali. In San- they represent different Sanskrit words. But even in Pali, they tend to get confused because they overlap to some extent. So because hatred <laughs> is also a blemish or a fault, the two words tend to sometimes to get to come together, the meanings to blend. But there are other contexts where they have to be kept distinct. <coughs> Dvesha. Yeah. Dvesha. Yeah. With a dot? It's like S H. Sh. Dvesha. But in. Yeah, that's in Sanskrit. In Pali, all the S sounds come together are just simple S. There's no sh in Pali. But in Sanskrit there are three S sounds. Sh, sh, and s. Yeah, then on page 108, yoga, they give application. But maybe, I'm not, I have to look at the passage, it might be yoga in the sense of spiritual exertion, particularly in meditation. Spiritual exertion, exertion, effort, yeah, meditation, in med- especially in meditation. <laughs> Yoga, what? <laughs> you said a country? No, you said name of a car company. Car company. <laughs> I thought you meant Yugoslavia. 
Yugoslavia. Yet down below Satta here, S A T T A. Let me just see if I can find it. Yeah, here the rendering of sunk is all right, but other (coughs) places it might have the sense of attached to. But here in this, this, this verse, sunk seems to be all right as a rendering. Okay, the rest seem all right. Any questions? Okay, if no questions, then we'll continue next week. Okay.